stated before I uh, rebooted the stream, which is that uh, we're going to be concentrating once again on our buddy, this guy right here. This, uh, specifically this guy. This uh, shorthand animator figure puppet that we can use for doing shorthand figures for animation. Uh, we're going to be working on getting more fluid with him again today. And uh, just getting some more mileage in and with him. Feel free to build off of him and add stuff to him if you want to elaborate on him, kind of like what we did yesterday with some of the more elaborate stuff we did. But I want people to get fluent with this guy because we're going to be doing animation stuff with him next week. I haven't decided, like I said, I haven't decided what that is going to entail just yet. But I'm talking with some other animators about what we're going to do with that. So we're going to start a warm up set very shortly. Um, feel free before you jump right into doing the po the poses that are on screen. Uh, maybe loosen up your hand. Maybe try a few cracks if you are familiar with our little friend, the the um, the Disney style figure uh, figure shorthand puppet. If you're familiar with him, feel free to do a quick like a few figure invention poses with him. And stuff. We'll try to keep it quick and loose tonight. There will be times when I might like deviate into some more construction anatomy or something like that. But I definitely want to focus in on this this week. Uh, also, like I've been, I've been taking a look at like the analytical figure drawing stuff that we were talking about yesterday. I think doing that stuff would be great. But I'm going to see if I can steer us in, the, in a more animation-oriented direction this next week. I'll see how I can weave that in, though. Like, I want to find a way to put it to like put it into what we're doing without like killing the momentum of the other stuff we're doing. With gesture drawing and animation. I guess we're never going to go back to the whole hands thing, huh? <laughs> oh, we're going to. That's one of the things I'm looking at, actually. So I have a whole bunch of analytical figure drawing hand reference gathered for that. I mean, it's inevitable that we're going to need it. If we do go back to the hands, though, it's probably going to be we're going to be animating hands this week. Our scene will involve hands, so that means we're going to do a lot of hand studies and stuff. I'm thinking of something along the lines of, like, remember that anatomy, uh, animated anatomy thing I wanted to do? I'm thinking we'll probably do that, in addition to something else that's more kind of action-oriented. It's the strategy of, like, uh, coming up with assignments for things that are also, like, that are fun, that are, like, personal work assignments, uh, or personal work projects that, uh, integrate, like, something you're trying to learn into them. Whatever. Anyway, so... My wrist is wrist and arm are kind of warmed up, so I'm going to start us on an official figure drawing set very shortly. Just give it another minute. When that pose changes, I'll start the uh, timer. And we'll get going. Oh, I forgot. I'm gonna, I need meant to post. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I think I should get Magma Studio going actually, before we get going any further. Let's move that off screen here. This. Don't need that anymore, do I? But it's remarkably easy for me to set this up, so I'm just going to do this real quick. One, two, three, four, five. Again, I got five panels. And. Make 
go. One, two, three, four. There we go. All right. So, whoops. One, two, three. So this one's mine. Whoops. Wrong thing. So for those who don't know, Magma Studio is a, is a collaborative drawing app that we've been using for our classes lately, and it's a hell of, hell of fun thing to use. I'm going to be putting it on screen so people will be able to see on see everyone drawing together, and I'll be able to see everyone drawing together in the class and stuff. I've got my own panel here that I'm going to use, number five here, I believe. So I'm going to um, I'm actually post these in, let's see, looks like I'll have to post them in the classroom chat. I'll we'll do that. Uh, so let's see here. So this will be panel one. Try to keep it around two to three people per panel. So panel two. Panel three. Oh yeah, no, yeah. Now I remember what I was gonna what I wanted to do next week with that uh, figure drawing stuff, with the uh, the anatomy stuff. Like I wanted to do like a the step by step thing next Wednesday for step by step anatomy. We do that, and then we would probably segue from that into doing like an animated anatomy study. Once people understand how the thing works, then we can do an animation of it. Anyway, I'll give people a few minutes to get kind of situated in Magma Studio. Um, the instances to participate in those are posted in the, in the Discord. We are in Ethan Becker's Discord today instead of uh, instead of my personal Discord, by the way. Let's see here. Tab. Tab. There we go. Got a few people in so far. It's cool. I'll be able to jump around between the different panels. There's two people on panel one. One panel three is open. Let me check to see if the link on it is working. Yeah, panel three link is working. So if I want to do like some drawing here I can on my own instance of the app right here and maybe maybe uh, I'm gonna maybe do like the warm-up set with you guys on the app so I'll put you guys on screen. Well, if you need a, if you need an invite to the to Ethan Be the Ethan Becker Discord, I can supply that in chat, in uh, Twitch chat. Just let just let me know in Twitch chat if you need an invite there. Uh, just remember, there's something you have to read and click through in the rules. So read and click through in the rules section. Before, what the fuck is going on here? Before you can post. All right, so. Let me check something real quick. Okay, I'll move this off panel. Just for now. All right, so, okay, Google, set timer for 20 minutes, 30 seconds. 20 minutes and 30 seconds, and we're starting now. Let's we'll start on this pose, officially. Hmm.
So you're going to see me using bits of the, the figure puppet and also some of the analytical figure drawing stuff we did yesterday. I am a little feeling a little fatigued today, so just be aware of that. Hopefully I can get my energy up. I get some good drawing in. Whoops. So these are two minute poses. If that's not enough time for you to do something in, you can try inventing something. Like I would maybe even try to invent like another action with the same pose or something, or the same character. This guy's got very Yoshikage Kira energy. Although I think that might be selling him short. It's a very intense gaze here going on with this dude. has got a pose that's just screaming to be made into a manga character in some capacity, I would say. I mean, it's already a JoJo pose, so... See someone standing or strutting or bending over or dancing. Oh shit, is that a JoJo reference? Not to knock a Rocky, but a lot of the stuff that people think are JoJo. JoJo poses are actually pretty stock and common. Common poses in the fashion world. Would I recommend Clip Studio over Photoshop? Um, depends what you need it for. And also, it's an affordability issue. I would say that money-wise, that Clip Studio is a much better value than Photoshop. Photoshop is honestly at price gouging prices these days, as is like the rest of the Adobe suite. I mean, in most cases, you're probably better off just going open source with either GIMP or Krita. Like, even Krita is a vastly superior option just for illustration if you can't get Clip. Mm hmm. There's also a lot of animation plugins for Krita that work really well, too. Just beware of the brush setting rabbit hole. It goes deep and it doesn't end. Mm -hmm. It 
So I'm bringing it back to this stuff again because this is something that I'm familiar with and I'm pretty... Um, I'm not overwhelming myself like during a time when I'm fatigued. I'm giving myself a good steady art workout here doing these poses. I'm going to try not to bite off more than I can chew. And just get some observational mileage of action and figure posing. Like, and I'm going to handle the, um, because I'm, I'm doing everything so simple and gesturally, like that kind of keeps me from getting too confused with what I'm looking at. We may do some drawover studies today, too. Drawover studies are really good to do, uh, to reorient yourself or to pick up on things that you're not quite seeing in your own drawing. And they're also great to do if you're feeling a little bit fatigued. So it's just a question of what we would use for the drawover studies. Probably some animation. So like we're gonna be looking at Sakugaburo stuff today. So we might take some still frames to do some, if we see some really neat still frame poses to study from, we can probably yoink some from Sakugaburo to do drawover studies of. Mainly what I was gonna talk about today with in relation to Sakugaburo is like starting, is like talking about how to like break down and I uh, like uh, make notes of animation you like because we're going to be starting to look a bit more at how to study animation and how do you utilize stuff from existing animation as like um, an idea sheet or stuff to try for yourself or to try to try your own spin on it on the same idea without like plagiarizing it. But um, the core of good animation comes from observation of real life. So we should root everything we do in like uh, figure figure posing and live action studies and things like too. Things like that too in addition to like studying animation. You can learn a lot of tools for your tool belt and tricks and stuff and like see how other people approach doing the handling the figure or handling certain poses or breaking stuff down by studying animation. But there's uh, if you do that exclusively, that's going to um, uh, that's going to uh, potentially hurt you. Also, yeah, that, uh, that that link that was just posted that was to the um, here. I'm gonna I'm gonna do an invite link for the people that are trying to get into the Ethan Vector server. Uh, feel free to just copy paste this link again if anyone else asks. There you go. So here, that's the Ethan Becker server link that is that I just posted in uh, in this in a uh, Twitch chat. That's what we're using for today's class. My Saturday classes are always on Ethan Becker's server, by the way. And they're at 2.30 p.m. instead of 5.30 p.m. So I've been pretty productive this week on, like, developing for my... Taking steps on my personal projects and stuff. But I want to go... I want to go further. I want to dig deeper next week. So... But with that in mind, uh, I'm gonna, I just want to get my mileage in today, look at some inspiring, fun, fun stuff to get fired up and juiced up about when I, uh, when I get far into stuff this next week. And then I want to maybe go have some fun, because I've, I've put in a good productive week this week. I can share some of the stuff that I've been working on, like in personal work development. I want to try maybe animating the characters that, I'm, that I've been developing next week. Or at least getting some storyboards out. Because I think I'm at the point where I can I can do that. 
the stuff that I'm at, for the stuff that I'm working on. Keeping it loose, keeping it simple. We are still get, getting a little warmed up here too, but... I mean, today is Saturday, it should be a fairly easy going day. Even though we are trying to get a serious art workout in. It's like, don't blow a gasket. What I want to make sure is that we uh, we get in a good solid workout today. I'm going to make sure that even though we are going to look at Sakuga and we might do some draw upper studies and stuff, I'm going to try to keep us from getting too loosey goosey today, so that we can we can step away from what we did today feeling pretty satisfied. Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? There's eight minutes and 35 seconds left. Eight. I think it's a good idea to draw sometimes when you're feeling a little fatigued too. Because there's times when you're working professionally and when you're going to be feeling fatigued. I mean, don't push yourself to the point that you like burn yourself out. But I mean, sometimes you have your off days. It doesn't mean that you're burned out. It just means that you just don't have as much energy that day. That's kind of what's going on with me at the moment, but I'm persevering regardless. I'll just make sure I have a really good rest after this three-hour session that we're going to have. Go and have some fun. I might get a nap in. Play some games. Do some other fun things. Sunday is usually my day to, to do fun stuff, too. So I'll probably do some of that tomorrow. But again, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I draw a good amount every day. So I'll be doing that, too, tomorrow. I just have a lot more freedom with it than I do on the days when I'm teaching classes. I think what we're going to do with the analytical figure drawing stuff is I'm going to keep, I'm going to study it. I want to study it. I just don't know if it's what we're going to focus on for these classes just yet. Because I kind of feel like uh, I need to get a good handle on that before I can really uh, do it in here. But there are some really good ideas for exercises in those that I think will help us once I start getting a little bit more of a handle on that particular approach to figure drawing. I don't feel like drawing that pose. I need to get up and walk around a bit, actually. I'm going to take a look at what people are drawing. I need to physically get up and walk around, but I'm going to take a look at what people are drawing on screen. Let's actually put that on screen. Trying to get some oxygen in my veins. Yeah, there's a thing you're supposed to click in the rules section in order to get access on Ethan's server.
Uh, Buster, I would say you want to start your poses looking for a line of action, looking for a strong line of action first. Your poses are looking pretty kind of piecemeal at the moment. Try to find some kind of like a long, like you want to try to like unify the pose in some kind of overall thrust and feeling. Um, so I would start with like a really, really long, simple line of action. Yeah, and then you let that drive what the pose is doing. Try to look for like what the simplest single line or single line that can describe the pose would, would be. The simplest, longest single line that can describe a pose before you start uh, working into it as a figure. Mind you, you don't always have to physically draw a line of action to get a sense of a line of action, but you kind of need to kind of need to draw a line of action an awful lot in order to kind of like look at a drawing and then see, then see oh uh, there's a line of action that goes this way in it, even though you don't you didn't physically draw it necessarily. There's still the sense that uh, that things are all going in a sync and are all thrusting in a particular direction or whatever. Yeah, so I've got a bit of a technical question, but I I can't seem to get the my, this Magma Studio thing to work properly. Like my my lines just stop at a dot most of the time, and I don't know what's what's the deal here. Um, wish I could help you. Uh, oh, okay. Just, yeah. Just, if you, if it's not working for you, then just this. Uh, I I would waste any time doing technical support on it right now. It, it just just use whatever drawing app works for you to get to get your mileage in. So what what, yeah. matter, what matters is that you get your drawing app. Okay. You can post um, you can post stuff in chat, and I'll take a look at it too. Sketchy face has just posted some stuff. Wow, well, sketchy face. Let's take a look here. In particular with Magma Studio, um, always make sure you're using a Chromium-based browser and you have Windows Ink enabled for whatever tablet device you're using, because ah. that's usually the kicker. Yeah. It wor it actually works on iPad, by the way, but you have to use the Chrome browser and iPad. That actually might be my issue, too. I'm using Firefox. Mm. Yeah, it does not work in Firefox. I can, I can yeah. confirm that. Yeah, use hey. Chrome. I, I, yeah, yeah, use Chrome. I haven't tried it in Safari or anything else yet, either. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it works. This works in mainly just yeah, works in Chrome. Like, Ooh, man, it has sure. to be a uh, it has to be a Chromium-based browser. So if it's you're using Edge, you're using Brave, you're using um, what you call it, uh, Chrome, then you should be fine. Yeah, one second. Let's see. Oh yeah, I just uh. I... Somebody asked if there's more magma panels. I just put one in chat. Panel six is in chat. We skipped panel. Panel five is always my solo panel in these sessions. Panel seven and panel eight. So it should be enough for everyone. If we need more, just let me know. It should be about like two to three people per panel. Actually, no, I want to, yeah, copy, I'll put that one in clip, there we go, that goes here, all right, cool, okay, Google, set time, okay, Google, um, set timer for 10 minutes, 
done, 10 minutes added to your 20 minute and 30 second timer. So we've got a nice solid 10 minute break where we can talk about some stuff. Uh, like I said, I'm... Well, I'm looking to uh, get serious in an animation direction next week using this guy. Um, I also want to... I am also I am looking at the analytical figure drawing Michael Hampton stuff and some other things. I don't know if I sh if I can really teach that yet, but I want but I'm I am studied. And uh, um, the other thing is the I want to I want to maybe have us do some next Wednesday maybe some anatomy drill stuff where I like where we do like um memorization a memorization session of like the torso or something like that. Probably torso would be a good one to start with. And, uh... And we maybe use Power of Animation maybe Friday or Saturday or something, maybe next Saturday, using the, um... the studies we did on Wednesday, the anatomy studies we did to create animation or something. But we'll see. Like, I've wanted to do, like, the animated anatomy studies thing for a little while. Yeah, uh, what's, uh, what's the person that was drawing here that I told to do the single line of action? I see a couple of your poses look a little bit stronger already. Like, this one. I think you did it on this one here. This is really simple, but it, it, this one, re this one's a lot stronger to me. Look for that singular kind of singular kind of thrust that unifies the pose. So Yeah, I mean it's fine. Uh you can always post your art in my in my personal Discord later too. Actually, what's uh visible invisible man? What's your username in uh in Ethan's Discord? I could just uh I mean like I I can I vetted you now so I can just verify you there. Well, Invisible Man, whenever you get the chance, uh, let me know. I can verify you in Ethan's Discord so you can get access and stuff. So, anyway, let's see here. Oh, Nils is actually on right now. I'm asking them if they want to come down and pay us a visit. It's a little short notice though, so it's okay if they can't right now. But Nils is a uh, professional animator from e e Ethan's Discord, who I'm going to be talking with about setting up a curriculum for animation.
Yeah. So they said they want they want to come and pay us a visit in the future, but it's midnight where she is right now. She's got to go to bed. So we'll talk to her in the future. It'll be neat. All right. So, uh, or we might have like a special meeting. Like I think uh, I think I might be able to schedule something during a time when she's on. And if it becomes necessary, we might actually schedule uh, classes in the future at times that align with her time. Because she wants to do animation classes in Ethan's Discord. And she's on uh, European time. She's over in France. Alright, so uh, I had, did have a mini homework assignment yesterday. Uh, I was hoping that people might be able to post that and post their contributions to that in the classroom chat. So what, what I had us do uh, for the people who remained at the end of the class yesterday is I told them to go through Sakugaburu and find some cool clips of Sakuga animation that they think is fun, is fun or interesting or unique or whatever. It's whatever it can be storyboards it can be whatever in fact you can just search through that right now and if you find something just on the fly you can post it in chat but if you have any clips of really really cool animation from sakura burrow to share what the hell oh, this is like a my hero academia parody but um if you have any um if you have any cool clips to share stuff that we found in Sakugaburu, then uh, feel free to post. I think we saw this one yesterday. Was this the Golgo 13 shooting through the building scene? Oh. <laughs> this is something else here, but... Oh yeah, the psychedelic car. In Golgo 13. Remember that. Golgo 13 is really, really fun, but really problematic. <laughs> let's let's just say there's some things in the film that in the film that haven't aged well, but there's a lot that has. find some of the clips of the stuff that has as well. No, that's not one. You gotta be careful with those because there's some peeps and I can't show nudity on, on stream. Some Jujutsu Kaisen stuff here, I see. Really not much going on on this beginning part here, but I know that there's going to be stuff. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> there was quite a lot of Westerners that contributed to this this series, by the way. An awful lot of Western animators that were posting their clips from the show to Twitter. That's neat. Not the most elaborate sh shot, but there's a lot of really great composition in this. Yeah, a lot of subtle stuff going on. In spite of like not being many frames here. There's a lot of good Jujutsu Kaisen stuff. You can always tell like what what series are the fans' favorites because they they get like massive amounts of uploads. Yo, know, space that. What are we doing today? Hey, what's up? Okay, Google, stop. Well, um, we're doing uh, quick poses, and we're also taking a look at Sakuga animation. We might do some studies of Sakuga 
poses, but we're mainly going to be doing more of the practice of the quick poses. Uh, one second. Sorry about that. I had to take care of something real quick. We're going to get started on another set. It'll be another set of twos. Um, going to jump into Got to loosen up and liven up a bit. Get my blood going. Actually, in fact, I'm going to have everyone do this right now. Before we do the next set, first off, save your drawings. Save your drawings as a PNG. And create a new draw, then create a new layer and hide your old layer. Once you do that, I want people to like do kind of a little bit what I'm doing, like do like spirals and curves, just like have some fun, like making the pencil dance around the page. Use your arm, don't you do not use your wrist. Practice using your arm, practice using the strokes that you're gonna be using to pull off the the figure posing. Get your manual dexterity warmed up. Maybe get a few straight lines in there, like this. Like you want the you want to get your hand and your arm dexterity warmed up a little bit. There we go. Now I'm doing the pose that's on the screen right now. Just a little quick gesture. And now when now that you got your hand and your arm warmed up. I want you to commit to avoid pressing down hard with your pencil tonight. Sometimes you can go a little bit harder than others, but I want you to use a really light touch. Now the light touch does not mean that you don't draw that you draw timidly. Light touch means your pencil just kind of kisses the page and you can pull off these really dexterous calligraphic strokes and stuff. You don't get like caught up you don't get caught up on super complicated stuff try to get like long long quick fun strokes sort of improvising a little bit off of the thing that's on screen right now this isn't really like a full figure drawing right now I'm just sort of like improvising some lines together to kind of get warmed up. Anyway, when you're feeling pretty good, we're going to get started in the next minute after this pose changes. So, okay, Google, set timer for 20 minutes, 50 seconds. 20 minutes and 50 seconds, starting now. So when this pose changes, we're officially going to be started on the next set. Just get, just get your arm moving. Draw from your arm. Don't, do not draw from your wrist. Avoid drawing from your elbow. 
I'm not going to rule out the elbow, but you want to not draw from your wrist. Try to draw from your arm. That's how you can pull off, like, steadier strokes, or, like, elliptical strokes. More dynamic strokes, stuff. Here we go. First pose. So, I'm going to think about shape of this guy. The overall shape of containing shape of the pose, like almost kind of like a big blob to contain it. Put a foot back, back down over there. Foot over here that correlates to that. Maybe shrink this a bit so I get my drawing space up top. Is a quick gestural exercise. So there's more I can do with it. I drew that way too big for this page. I shrink that down really, really small. Your first few of these should look like garbage, by the way. It's normal. Just kind of need to get attuned to the rhythm of using using your whole arm. Kind of get your need to get your aim calibrated a bit. So I'm drawing gesture right here. I'm not really as concerned with structure or accuracy. We only have two minutes to draw these anyway. So I'm just trying to get like the overall feeling of the pose. Making little adjustments and so on. The things that I think could be pushed out more a bit. I drew this guy really way too big for this page again. So I'll move him over there. So I've not moved beyond the my drawings are garbage phase just yet. Still got to get a few more swings and misses before I get tuned back in this mode of drawing.
Yeah, this is also an exercise of not being timid. Like, we want to just jump right in these. Just record our impressions of them, get information down quickly, then move on to the next one. Kind of doing a sensory bombardment of observing poses, trying to get feeling in them, and then moving on to the next. And as we get more warmed up, we'll start to be able to make smarter, slower decisions. But first we have to kind of get this nervous energy out of us and get the blood going. So this is warm-up phase two, essentially. So yeah, this is, I mean, this is really messy, but this feels a lot better than, all, than the previous two that, I, that I'd done already. So like, even if you make something that's a mess, if you struggle to make it, you will probably get better results with your next drawings. So this one, we're going to skip this one, because this one doesn't really do it for me for gesture. Ah, there, there we go. It's a Dante sculpt. I can maybe have some fun with this one. Exaggerate it a little bit. So we can see the front of his pelvis and the back of his torso there. Oh yeah, maybe we should look at the Dead Cells trailer again. Remember I did like those uh, those studies previously? I got a lot, of, a lot out of doing those. There's good stuff in that trailer. Might be a good, good idea to look at that one again for doing some Sakugo studies. I kind of have a, a muscle memory of what I did for those. So it might be a good idea to jump into those for one of our little study segments here. Either that or else we can find something like by the same people who made that trailer. There's one of the Dead Cells DLC trailers that has like really really nice drawing in it. For the animation, 2D animation in it. Sort of starting with the feet a little bit, so I kind of want to because those seem really important to this. I've started with like a ring here to kind of place the three feet feet in three D space. Like this other one is back further in space a bit. Like actually, it might be actually more about here a little bit more. Head can probably go a little bit more to the left. This is back arm back here. I'm trying to make sense of what he's doing there. I think this arm is doing this. It's getting clever by cloth and fabric here, so.
Yeah, if you're not used to drawing from your arm, then that just means you need to build up your arm, your muscles in your shoulder and your arm. It's, it's tricky at first, but you need to do it because you're going to fuck up your hand. And also, you, the artists don't really draw from their wrist. Like, that's a bad time. It's a recipe for a carpal tunnel and a recipe for shaky hand with a uh, shaky hand that can't do calligraphy. I'm keeping this pretty simple. I'm not too worried about like the details and stuff. I'm gonna just like push the pose and stuff and play with the pose at the time that I have. There's some qualities going on in this that I didn't quite capture that I would want to come back to on this to try again. <laughs> didn't quite capture what a lot of hubris that I kind of made a mess with this one because I didn't really quite know how to approach it. At least I tried. So this guy, I've drawn him several times before. I go with simplicity for this. I need to get up and stretch again. Oh. Hmm. Taking a peek at what people are doing. In class. Yeah, I do see a jump up because we did that little bit of warm-up with the arm. And I'm telling people to pay attention to those rhythms and stuff. Yeah. I think trying to remember to do those kind of like warm-up-y sessions would be a good idea in the future. Of like warming up your hand and arm before we get into drawing. It's not everyone remembers to do that. And I keep forgetting to do that to do that myself. I always get better results whenever I just kinda go nuts with the um with doing like lots of really big sweeping arm movements to make big lines and stuff like it's it gets the blood flowing to your arm and your and uh your drawing your drawing arm and you're warming up your dexterity and stuff also it's fun Like just jumping right in and attacking a pose.
Like, look at how crude this is that I did. Right here, one sec. This is crude, but it still it feels like the pose, doesn't it? Let's see, maybe I can put a few shapes onto this thing before I move on. Let's make it the ribcage egg there. Maybe get Elvis box down in here. get some simple leg rhythms here so that's the point of uh, doing like those kind of really rough forceful gestures so then you have something to kind of like drive the rest of the pose I did these really big though really astronomically huge so I better shrink there we go His legs are looking a little short now in hindsight. Probably because I crotch is supposed to be up here. I think that's what what went wrong, but whatever. I got this guy now. I'm doing a little something I was doing yesterday of like after I get the initial gesture down, lower opacity on it, and then I take another crack at the pose, solidifying either the gesture or getting some shapes down. So I'm including a little action line here. So describing like something like the, the flight path of that foot. Okay, Google, stop. All right, 
So the general effect you should have when you like zoom back on the page is you should be able to tell what's going on in the poses. So we're going to take a little, let's give it a 10 minute, another 10 minute break. That'll give us more time to take a peek at some Sakuga stuff, so. Okay, you will set timer for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, starting now. I put people on camera there. There we go. Lovely. I don't know if I'm, I'm going to be able to do drawing demos today or not, but we'll see. Because I'm pretty fatigued. I'm doing the best I can. I'm struggling to push my gesture because I know when I'm feeling more rested and stuff, this little bit of art, visual memory workout stuff is going to just strengthen me when I get when I get back nice and rested. And mind I you, mean, the, you can just... mind you, the, re the I'm not rested. I'm not like fatigued right now because I've been drawing too much. I'm fatigued right now because I kind of have a, had a little bit of a rough night's sleep. That's all. So like, uh, when I get a good night's sleep, I'll be fine. Let's. You could just give, You could just give like verbal critique if that's the case. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I'll, I, I save it for I save the critiques from when I have energy to do them. Uh, in the future, like if when I get like way better, way fucking better at what I'm doing, I'll be able to do critiques even when I'm kind of feeling fatigued. But I kind of need to have like be firing on on. I need to be firing on all cylinders, I think, to give good feedback. But it's it, sometimes it, it's sometimes it's it's weird though. Like uh, sometimes like I'm feeling a little fatigued, and then I just try giving critique. And then I get into it, and then then, you, then the endorphins start firing off, and then I start getting energy to do it. So, who knows? We might do that tonight. Yeah. Feel free to share stuff if you uh, want to post it in uh, the Discord chat. I'm, somebody said, I'm not used to art during the day. During, doing art during the day completely saps my energy for some reason. Hmm. That sounds like something you might want to work on. So you want to be able to do art anytime if you can, or have a regular art hours for like your work days. I would say that starting uh, starting drawing early in the early early in the day is a good idea. By the way. Yeah, we've only been at this for an hour, so that was like set two. I'm thinking for this next set, I'll do a little demo of that little figure puppet we've been using. But, um, we'll see. I did want to get into the Sakuga stuff, so maybe we should do that. And then I can just explain the figure puppet um, with that. Oh, I know. We'll do a draw over study where we use the where we try to put the figure puppet on the um, poses of the Sakuga animation. That might be good.
Uh, I don't have time for that. Sorry. I'm back. Alright, yeah, I'm seeing some good stuff in the poses that people are doing. Um, Pig Legion, um, those are good gestures. I would say the biggest thing I see going off with them is um, um, pay attention. Pay attention to center of ba uh, center of, ba of balance. I think you pulled it off a little bit better on the first pose on the left, but the one on the right here, a little bit of imbalanced. She she is like her her center of gravity is changing because she is kicking and stuff. Uh, but I think you got I think you got a little bit lacking in confidence with that pose because there's a lot going on there. Um, I tried to go for kind of like a thrust to the whole kick, driving the whole thing, a thrust through the body. And I was thinking of like the out, of what what I would do for like an out if I was doing like an absolute gesture out of this pose. I really liked how like um you could design almost like a sort of a shape like this for her. Like almost a question mark kind of shape for her, like her shoulders up there, her curve of her body coming up there, and her foot coming down. There's also like when people kick like that, there's this kind of sort of like triangle area. Like here's the here's the point of the kick there. Here's the base of the foot down there where they're balanced, and so there's like. Their foot is going this way to deliver the blow, and that also means that they got to carry the balance of this right here, and uh, to compensate with that, their back or their buttocks is usually leaning out over that way a bit. Even though the leg might be fairly straight, like the back might be kind of curving up there, and you can actually see some of that going on on the kick that's on screen right now. I don't know what it is, but that specific kick, Hello? just because it's a good idea, just to kind of illustrate Hello. what I'm talking about. I believe I've lost the audio. There we go. Can't see my drawing. Yeah. Give me a second. So this is what I was talking about with like the overall thrust of the kick. Like you can think of the area that the kick occupies, the whole pose occupies this, this kind of triangle wedge where the body's got to compensate for the weight, the foot pushing out over that way. And you got to like pay attention to how the figure balances out and compensates for the force that's being thrown out over this way and striking something and uh, counterbalancing it. Okay, Google, stop. All right, so what I think we will do next is I want us to do a um, drawover demo using some Sakuka animation or a photo or two. So let's try this photo since it's the closest thing here. Let me uh let me just get a snip tool real quick. So that's gonna be uploaded uploaded to classroom chat. If you wanna follow along with this. We're gonna use this first and then we'll go with some Sakuga and Sakuga animation. But we wanna use like reality as our touchstone to start this. So we'll do it on one pose here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a draw over where we try to find like the the overall kind of like force of the drawing and also where we try to 
uh, basically put one of our little figure puppets that we've been using on this guy. So the figure puppet in its basic form, real quick, I'm just going to do like a super fast demo. Uh, you got like a sphere, you get like a ovoid for the head. You get some kind of like a cross pattern on it for showing the directional tilt of the head. I usually, I usually like this, usually, this uh, triangle wedge that kind of mimics like the like the cheekbones and stuff of the face. Um, you can use like a um, simple like single line right there for like uh, for the neck, or you can just use like a, two lines for like a C like um, C curve neck kind of thing. The actual body, uh, you want to pay attention to tilt of the shoulders. In this case, this character is going to be straight onto us. You want to pay attention to the tilt of the shoulders versus the tilt of the hips. That's something that you want to pay attention to when, like, the pose counterbalance itself or when it does like kind of this accordion sort of thing where one side is stretched and the other side is, is pulled. Let's get the center line going down here. Uh, when you're drawing this in three, when you're drawing the, um, the character in three quarter, um, the center line is not the is not the line of action or the spine, mind you. The center line is going down the front of the body, like kind of like this. That also means like if the torso twists, like say this, like say we're uh, say we we see more of the side plane of the buttocks here. That's the front of the buttocks right there. It's the side plane and that the torso is twisting like this. The center line right here is going to go up around, right around to where the pit of the neck is on this guy. Something like that. And then, so you get like this kind of pillowy body right here. Almost kind of like a flower sack a little bit. You can, you can keep it as like a straight up kind of pop tart brick sort of thing but just know that this thing bends a lot i like to favor like an in indenting about here about halfway down or so because that's usually like a good way to sort of um a good way to sort of like slightly kind of imply the uh separation of the rib cage and the pelvis but anyway so the other thing you do is um you handle the limbs like very, very simply. They're kind of like stick figure limbs. I make this guy a little thick. I'm gonna thin him up a bit. But if you need it, if you want to make your puppet thick, you can. These guys are supposed to be modular. Let me just fix this guy up a little bit. So the elbows come down to around like halfway here in the pillow body. The wrists come down to about the bottom here. And then the hands go a little bit further out. Hands are about like this, this big compared to the face. So the other thing uh, I didn't make note of is that okay, the, top, the top of the bottom to the pivot crotch is usually roughly about equal to the top of, to the pivot of the crotch to the bottom of the feet right here. Let's see here. Let's say then yeah the calves would be calves would probably be about like this long I would say. Yeah. The thighs actually go up a little bit further, technically. The thighs are technically as long as this, but that's if they go up a little ways here. So maybe like this, this long minus half a head length. So like this, minus like that much. Could be about the thigh. From the hip bone down here. Yeah, that's the part right. 
that's your basic puppet and then you can pose them out and I want people to have fun with messing with this puppet you can do lots of invention with them and stuff and he's supposed to be there for like you doing like sh quick shorthand these are a bunch of poses that I did the other day um, these are all invented poses by the way there's a, I think there's a few that are not invented but most of them are yeah no all, all the poses are invented here there's no no not invented poses um, but yeah, so anyway, so now that we got this guy here, uh, let's try putting our puppet onto him. So we st what do we do? We start with the ovoid head, right? And we're going to be using, uh, you can, so you can use, what you can use is, um, you can use an ellipse right here, around like the halfway point of the eye in the center line here. But for me, I like doing this. This is, this is my approach. I like basically doing this for like. So that top line right there, it can sometimes be like this, the, the eye line, but usually it's the brow line. Brow line is above the eye line. And then I have like a halfway point here. Another thing I do is see like, you, know, you see how the head is angled like this right here? In order to get that in there, what I like to do is I put like a, a uh, ellipse shape on the side plane of the skull. So like the, the skull is a cube. This is what's happening here, basically. And uh, then I take the eye line, and I cut across. Well, I, I aim for the ear from the eye, from the brow line. Sorry, I think I actually got this ellipse a little off. That should be more up here, actually. Head ellipse is a little bit large too. Should be about here more. But you see, like this is a really modular thing. Like, um, there's enough information in here that like you can build off of this to do a plausible face. Like, see, so you add the eye, uh, you like start adding in breaking down stuff, adding in um, different rhythms for like different like ways that the head is constructed and stuff. But we're not going to get into that today. This thing is like supposed to be really modular, so you can take those next steps when you get when you need them. So we're gonna stick with this with your basic head, and uh, we could do just like a little one of those, but I'm gonna have us do like a C curve, parallel lines for a C curve. Maybe like add in like the um, the pit of the neck right there. So we're going a little, we're going a little above and beyond just doing our little sigma puppet because this is also an opportunity for like finding that little anatomical landmark. So now I'm just kind of getting the whole shape of the body. Did you notice that little crease there? Right there. If the body's like a flower sack, it's kind of creasing right there. So you get something along these lines. You can you uh, we wanted that pit of the neck there, so we can aim down between the pectorals, down through the belly button, down to the pit of the crotch right here. That big long line. So I'm kind of aiming the leg about here, I would say. I'm creating this kind of like S curve line here with the knees about somewhere in here. Maybe extra curve this out. This puppet we're drawing is not necessarily a skeleton, by the way. It's a gestural puppet sort of implying the overall figure, basically. So this is not like literally where the bone is I'm drawing here. We're trying to put our puppet on this guy, basically. We're putting the puppet in the same pose as this guy, but the, we're drawing the puppet. Uh, there's parts of this guy that we are using. I'm drawing some rings over his body to further... Like a, notice I'm drawing like a ring over there from one pectoral to the other, across the abs, across the hips. 
stuff. Just do like a quick sort of potato foot. We're looking at the top plane of the, that foot too. All right, so let's see here. I'm gonna do like a little. So if you notice, like on the way that I've drawn these, it's like occasional I'll include like a little indication of like a collarbone kind of thing. This weird little kind of collar V indication. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of that right now. For this, this goes up to about here, which is like the that joint of the shoulders. And then I'm just gonna do loose gestural, flowy, bendy, almost like bendable wires right here for the uh, the arm. We're not doing hand drawing today, but I'm gonna just include like a little bit of. Actually, if I did that, if I did that here, it would kind of get kind of overlap on that st other stuff I did. So I'm gonna hold off on. I was going to do like a hand wedge, but one thing you can do um, when you're doing these, like if you get a palm, do the palm as a cube. That's kind of like slightly curved usually. And um, put a little triangle wedge in there because what that is, is, uh, well here, let's, uh, I'll show you. Let's get this thumb here. This is like the three, this is like a, that little wedge in the center of your palm that's like between these three groups of the, of the sections of the palm. Yeah. Anyway, so we're not going to get too far into hands today, but uh, I just wanted to show you how that works a little bit. Like the palm trowel. Anyway, so, so we got this. Same, -ish, same thing as that one back there, like we create this kind of like gestural bendy wire. And look, this is what we got out of that. So I'm going to maybe darken this side because I can emphasize this being towards the ground and having more kind of weight, weight and force coming through it and stuff. Yeah, this was a good draw over study. Adjust his foot a bit to make him feel more balanced to me. So yeah, um, I do have a homework of this that I'm going to assign all of you. <laughs> Thought you could get away from me, could you? So, here's my homework this week. 100 figure puppets. Puppets. 50 from... Photos. 25 from Invention. 25 from Draw Over on Photos. Fifty copy studies. I think they're copy studies from photos. Optional twenty five. Drawers of animation 
for dynamic doses. So that's my that's my homework for this week. That'll be due next week. And I want to see it uh, uploaded into my personal Discord. Um, or uploaded uh, just, just before class, whatever. But my personal Discord, so we don't spam up the... Um, oh, someone already screenshotted it. But here. Let me put a little due date out and actually do two PM Saturday. What's the next Saturday date? At seven to three. Easy peasy. Three twenty. Yeah. What time zone are you in again? Pacific. There we go. Uh, I wanted to ask you something specific. Yes. In your Google Calendar schedule, you have this week uh, classes set up at 4.30 p.m. Pacific time. Four, Has it changed? 4.30? I thought yeah. it was 5.30. Uh, I felt the same. I thought you changed the schedule or something, but Saturday, Saturday is always it's always two thirty p.m. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or five thirty p.m. If it's four thirty, then I've got to change that. If something might have gotten fit, something might have gotten screwed up in the Google Calendar. Yeah, maybe. Is there a replay of the class you watch? Yes, uh, I upload these to YouTube later, and also you can watch this uh, this class again from the video of the day. And also, by the way, you can go about you can go above and beyond this. And also, uh, a hint, hint, uh, you can do your homework for these in my classes this next week. That's what the Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes are for. Although this Wednesday, we might be focusing on some anatomy drills. But Monday, at the very least, you're going to be able to do this. But I want you to guys, I want you guys to ideally do a little bit of this every day. And feel free to go above and beyond this. If you can do this every, if you can do a good, uh, like a good few hours of figure drawing every single day. It would make me a very happy space dad. All right, so we're going to grab another photo, uh, probably of a piece of animation, since we're good and warmed up on a nice uh, figure study from a real person. We have a touchstone to work from. So we're going to grab something that might be suitable. I have a few ideas. Uh, feel free to suggest some really cool. This is really acid trippy animation right here. I don't know if we'll use this, but this is really cool. I don't even know what this is from, but this is really nice. Well, there's the source there. It's cool. Um, so yeah, like the Hades stuff has some amazing posing in it. Uh, the roughs get a little blurry, but you can definitely see the, um, you can definitely see like the, the impeccable sense of figure, figure drawing in these for sure. We've actually studied these before, but we're not going to go like crazy, uh, like frame by frame with these as we have before in the past. We're just going to like yoink a few, man, like like a few of these, for example. Uh, we might grab something from somewhere else too. But yeah, see if you can find me like a um, some shots with really good posing. Oh yeah, Castlevania, Castlevania. Let's do Castlevania actually, because uh, Castlevania. I've been pointing to that one. This one shot in particular that by Samuel Dietz that um, shows off some really great figure drawing, but here it is right here. This right here. We'll screenshot some of these and we can do a little draw over study. So we have the roughs alongside the the, um, the cleanup final animation right there. 
So uh, we can actually like sort of get a sense of the. So, so his approach to figure drawing right here for these animations is he has a really solid understanding of like all this like stuff that we're we're trying to learn and get better at. So he's um he's able to go right into anatomy and he has the um just because he has a really good really well studied sense of anatomy and form and gesture and stuff he's able to like embed the gesture directly into the rough loose anatomy that he uses for this figure right here that's really cool i mean look at that fucking deltoid and shit <laughs> Yeah, that's a cool shot. There might be another few shots worth checking out. And eh, this isn't the best. It's neat, but it's not. I don't think this is the best There's to pull from. There's good stuff in it, though. Like, we need something that's very clear in its thrust. Oh, here we go. Wow. That's really nice. This is by an animator named Tom Liu. Let's take a look at some of their other work. It's all stuff from Castlevania, it looks like. Oh, cool. They uh, looks like they might have done some stuff on Battleship Brigade. It's nice. So uh, we're going to grab something from here. Let's see. It's got to be something really clear. <laughs> this might actually be good. maybe grab something I, i'm thinking i want to grab like a good standing pose of some kind from one of these i have a few ideas and the other was the dead cells trailer stuff so we'll hold on to the castlevania things but i know that the dead cells has stuff specific in it that i um oh dead cells let's try dead cells sakuga okay Okay, well, it looks like we're going to have to take screenshots from the Dead Cells animated trailer. Our Dead Cells... Dead Cells... Where is this? The Rise of the Giant? Which is the Dead Cells? It's the Bad Seed. Bad Seed DLC trailer. So, let's see. There was someone who actually took screenshots of this previously. Wish I had those handy. Here we go. Here's a really super dynamic shot. Let's maybe use this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna screenshot this real quick. We'll just go through. We'll start off on a couple dead cells things with just like some quick uh, studies of these. Feel free to follow along and also feel free to take the initiative yourself. Uh, we're gonna I'm gonna maybe give us about thirty minutes. Okay, Google, set timer for 30 minutes. 30 minutes, and we're starting now. So this will be a free study period. You can uh, you can follow along with what I'm doing uh, and use my reference, or you can grab your own from Sakugaburu or something and um, do drawovers. You can and you can copy paste these into um, uh, into Magma Studio, by the way, and you just lower opacity on it. And do a draw over. We'll just do a quick walkthrough of this real quick. So this guy has a, a head. This the headless doesn't really have a head. He has an eyeball with a little expression on it. It still has a sense of direction to it and stuff. Like as if this was a head sphere and, and so on. But for our purposes here, I'm just gonna like throw a, a special like a ghost head 
onto where the head would be. Just about somewhere there. So, two things to pay attention to. Tilt of the hips, tilt of the shoulders. And how that mass of the hips right here creases in there. Just like that other jump, that other um, bar we just did. So pit of the neck would be about here-ish on this guy. Um, it's got really nicely exaggerated arms here. In a uh, horse perspective. I'm gonna kind of like do this because that's really fun. It's fun shape, and I maybe add some a little bit of dimensionality to it. So the point of force here is like right on his heel, I would say. That's like where the that's where like the energy of this like kick that he's performing here is coming from. Like force is kind of concentrated on his heel. From like how this pose is is set up. I'm doing like a little bit of his ankle there, just like a little ellipse on the side. And I'm kind of cubing off the front of his shoe a little bit. So you can do kind of like a hybrid thing on this guy. You can add a little bit of volume to the limbs if you like. Use it as an opportunity to kind of like draw over the ellipses of the body. This is a lot looser than the previous studies I've done of this guy. And that's that's good for our purposes right now. Because the goal here isn't isn't to copy this the guy. We're trying to understand what's happening. What's making this pose get, have the energy it has, and of course, like pick off a little bit, little bits and pieces about its structure, its dimensional structure too. So the cool thing about these drawover studies is the more you do, more you do these, the more you pick up on, and the more fluent you get with doing them, and the more visually fluent you get in noticing things that you didn't before. In drawing and animation or just poses in general really you'll start like if you do like a lot of these on a lot of really dynamic animation you'll start seeing bits and pieces of stuff that you've done studies of in existing figure poses like that's why i picked this guy because this that little crease there right there that correlates to the um to the uh to the kick the martial artist kick guy that's still on screen on the right here So I'm pretty satisfied with that study, and I could go further with it, but I think it's time to yoink something else. So I have a lot of Sakuga, Sakuga stuff handy. I've got my screenshot tool ready to go. Uh, sometimes you want to like set set up your screenshots beforehand, maybe export some frame by frames to grab from a video file or something. But I'm going to jump right into let's see, um, let's grab something from from. Uh, the Hades trailer here. There we go, that's a nice pose. Let's see if I can find a really nice, clear, full figure. There's a good one. So this is a really tough pose because there's a lot going on with his arms. Oops, I fucked that up. Maybe I'll try a different pose actually. Yeah, actually, now that I think about it, I think I want to get a much clearer pose. Did I close the Castlevania window? I did, didn't I? Shit. Okay. Oh, no, there it is. 
All right, so actually, you know what? These these werewolf poses aren't too bad. And there's a well, he's he doesn't have a shirt, so that means we can see the musculature. Uh, he's got some weird stuff going on with how with his anatomy here. Uh, looks like he's got ab abs on his. Uh, he's got looks like he's got side abs. I, th I think that that's part of his very demonic design. Probably something from the games too. See if we can find a nice clear pose in here. Oh, I think I saw one. So this one right here. Yeah, this one right here. So what I'd like you guys to do is look for really strong, clear poses in a cool animation that you might have handy. You can you can follow along with what I'm doing, but find 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 and screen cap stuff, and then upload it to the classroom chat, and then we can yoink it. Uh, we can yoink the stuff that you share for the rest of the class to practice. And we'll just do that for like the next uh, what, 20 minutes or so, however much time we have left, uh, before we'll close out this evening with another figure drawing set. So this guy is a is a werewolf. So um, I'm gonna keep uh, I'm gonna do a little warpy thing right here. He's got a wolf muzzle. So that remember that little kind of triangle shape I had on the front of the face. I'm just extending that out and adding muzzle space to it but same head sphere it's the side of the plane the head works about the same and stuff so he's got a pit of his neck about there he's got this giant barrel ribcage chest and or body there and his arm is Use the potato right here. I'm going to do a, a, a kind of stretched out ellipse potato. Choosing to make the action line on the top here, because that seems to be the more active part of the pose, of the action of the pose on the top right there, where the feeling of that arm would be coming out. That's where I'm going to use the, I'm going to utilize our figure puppet. I was going to maybe do um, Trevor over there too. Yeah, that's honestly like enough. I could probably like put a leg in there or something, but it's enough for our purposes. Okay, so Trevor, we see his mouth right here. We see he's kind of like the top to the top of his head, so his eye wedge is probably somewhere in there. You notice like his uh his the way his pose is contained is it's kind of doing this right here. Keep an eye out for like the overall shape that the pose occupies at any at any given time. Like like look what's happening here with the werewolf. And then by the same token, Trevor's doing this. So I'm going right into doing the bean body right here, keeping it simple. Like it's not necessary to draw every little thing out. Like I'm not, I don't have to draw out like the pit of the neck on this pose and stuff. Kind of upturning the hand a little bit. He's got these little potato hands here. And try to get try to go for getting like some of the feeling of the attitude and the energy of the pose into your figure puppet.
I'm going to add some thickness to the arm, I guess, just for the overall thrust here. I'm kind of pretending like I'm pretending that I'm that I'm the one who animated this scene and this is this might be what I this might be something along the lines of what I started with. There we go. Let's see if we can grab another pose. I mean, this might work pretty well if we do some more of the Werewolf and Trevor, because... Uh, shirtless monster, where we can see the line of back, where we can see the center line of the chest. Plus another bonus pose of another dude that's in the same shot with him for, for a screenshot. There we go. <laughs> Let's see here. How does uh, Trevor defeat him again? I think he literally just like punches him to death <laughs> or something, if I remember. He just like bashes his, his brains in. Alright, so, this shot's a little bit more down muzzle, so I'm going to use more like of a, of a human face, just for the purposes here. Don't worry about the wolf muzzle thing. That works a little bit better for this, I think. Um... So we see like the top of his ribcage and the top of his shoulders kind of like through here. Something like that. So that means like his kind of bean body is going down and through here. We see his thighs coming off the sides there. So looping up around off the page get this. Those are some giant ass hands, so maybe we will do a little hand study. Just real quick. So check this out, look. When you're trying to find the knuckles on the hand, you should be swinging these kind of arcs in 3D space over the hand, so like Here's the hand from Palmer view, kind of. The knuckles would be like, would track like, like this, basically. And uh, this is the, <laughs> I kind of met, kind of did this really crudely, but this is, but like the palm is roughly about pretty close to the length for the base of the index finger, finger to the top of the index finger, but yeah. we're not doing a super huge hand study here. But I'm gonna maybe like throw in, let's say like a you know, little opacity on this, and maybe I'll do a little knuckle study right here, digit study. So I'm using these kind of ball and socket things that are from Bern Hogarth. that I got a little visually confused there. Let's see where where did they place the knuckles? 
There we go. Okay, so this, this finger is actually spaced out a little bit more over this way. This finger is more like this. The finger is more like that. The finger is more like that. So another quick thing. So we've got the metacarpals down here that are inside the hand, right? Get a bone that's underneath the skin here. That's going up to the base of the knuckle of the thumb. There's more skin here. And more flesh right there. And um, we only really see like that joint and that joint of the thumb right there. But there is a joint that's underneath your hand that fuses down there. Same thing here, there's the metacarpals right here. Of the bat of the uh inside of the palm. So anyway, that was a little detour for a quick hand study. Um let's get back to the let's get back to the figures. So See those little sh those little landmark points of the deltoids coming up. Those loop down with the clavicle. So we're seeing like the top of the clavicle right here. Stuff down around to wherever the uh, wherever the pit of the neck is somewhere in there. If you have X-ray vision, that arm's going off over that way somewhere. I'm not too worried about Trevor for this shot, so we'll move on to something else. Yeah, these are the kind of ways you can do these studies. Like, you can take little detours to do quick anatomy, thinking he's about something that seems interesting. Ooh, that looks interesting. I'm going to try that. You can do a more gesture-driven. You do, can do a more shape-driven thing. But I'm trying to make, like, observations about what's happening in these and uh, what the animator was thinking when they designed it. And, um where the action is coming from, where the energy of the pose is coming from. Hmm. Yeah, left and right kind of goes through too many frames too quickly for that. Zoom in a little bit. Let me try this. So, Werewolf is anticipating. He, fling, he uh, swings a punch. So there's like kind of a blur right here that overshoots the punch a bit, and then kind of springs back for his hand for his arm here. But the reason why I wanted to do frame by frame is that like watch his center, watch the center of gravity, the werewolf right here. So it's about like right here. And it kind of shifts over this way. And when it when that happens, like notice how his his leg positions, his leg and thighs positions change to kind of compensate to keep him balanced. So even with this tiny tiny drawing with not much detail on it um, you can get a sense of like the the weight and the balance in this so when he's coming uh, so like you can see the overall yeah let's use this one this is a good pose we'll use this because uh, Trevor's got a really, really good pose there. Like, that's a really dynamic, jumping through space sort of thing. And uh, the werewolf is caught in a really good, dramatic pose there as well. So, copy. Paste that into my drawing app, beef that up. Yeah, when you're doing the studies this week, I aim for really, really strong poses like these, like ones that are like really, really kind of at really peak important moments or have like a really strong feel to them.
so they can be in-betweens or they can be keys or whatever but if as long as there's like some kind of strength to them and clarity to them for you to pull from so first off i'm gonna like i'm gonna think about these in terms of shapes for a little bit look at this we can we can kind of see this is kind of this overall kind of a shape to trevor's pose right here we're just kind of pushing back over that way so this uh, legs right there then like the werewolf right here by comparison the werewolf is kind of doing this sort of thing there's a secondary action happening here too from the attack there so in terms of shape the werewolf kind of occupies like this sort of area here Trevor's more like this so it's like severely lower opacity on that actually I want to take that off here All right, so I figure puppets. I'm gonna start maybe with let's start with the werewolf because he's facing us. So remember, look for that overall thrust of the pose. Like, you can kind of see it right here. With the werewolf there. And that, in turn, influences this sort of... Shoulder, he's like, he's like, uh, his body is kind of like tilted. Um, his body's like tilted towards us in space. And uh, the, we can see the top of his shoulders right here. So like anchor point of the shoulder is about there. Then we have another shoulder that's going back in the space like that. This other leg that's coming up here, very powerful leg, very powerful raising of the foot there, very dynamic, athletic looking stuff. Like this is uh the stuff that we've been looking at for like runners and stuff would apply to this creature. this monster's athleticism so now let's get into human athleticism with Trevor here I'm gonna do the bottoms of his feet first because that just feels a good point good point for me to start with because I'm gonna be using the thrust of that real quick to create a quick line of action the lips doing like kind of an x-ray thing through the body then I'm gonna have this kind of bean body right here that's in space so I'm going to wrap lines over it here at this, about its big midsection right there. Just remind me what direction it's facing. From this thigh, connecting to the potato foot. Bendy, lot, bendy wire. I'm going to use the line of action as kind of the leg, basically. I'm not going to elaborate too, any more on that. I'm going to draw from the back. Create this rhythm going out to the wrist. So I just want the overall feeling of the rest of the pose. And let's see here. Let's see what it looks like when I get rid of the back. Yeah, there we go. So there's definitely some like secondary stuff that's reinforcing the dynamicism here, like the the werewolf's hair, Trevor's um, Trevor's coat, and yeah, and the the the, the um, loin cloth that's coming up a little bit. So I'm gonna include a little bit of that, a little bit of the hair at least. So I think that might reinforce. 
some of the action. So I'm just kind of like creating some gesture lines that are going out to the going out from like the shoulders down along the ends here. I just wanted to like throw something in there real quick. So to see what would happen. Okay, actually I'm saying I think I should maybe lower this a bit. Maybe that. Trying to see why the dynamics aren't quite reading as strongly. And see what the secret sauce is. Hmm. It's good enough for now, but I think there's like something going on with how I did the torso that's kind of detracting from it. But for me, that would be my guesstimate. There's like something about like the dynamics of the torso that are kind of not quite working. Still good pose. Still good pose practice though. All right. So let's see. Let's find us another pose to practice. Maybe from something else. Oh. Oh, here's a good pose. Well, let's see if we can find some other ones in, in this shot here. Trevor Solo or something. Yeah, there's good stuff in there, but... Let's take a look at this shot again, though. Alright, rewinding it a bit. Okay, let's do this. This is going to be kind of a vignette, but this is a good opportunity to do a little bit of observational study of the underlying gesture into this figure. Maybe even get a little bit of like kind of a quick shorthand anatomy thing in here and like see how they ha see how like an animator like this handles uh, some of the muscle groups. So that one's uploaded to chat. Again, though, if you want to take initiative and grab something from Sakugaburo to screenshot, please upload it in the classroom chat. And we can try it out, too. Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? 49 seconds left. Oh, well, we'll just make this our last thing that we do. Okay, Google, stop. Alright, consider it cancelled. Alright, so, what do we do? We do the same thing that we've been doing in the last few poses. So this guy's like, he's got kind of like, he, he's got kind of like he's uh, a mask over his face. Uh, in his character design, it's like this kind of weird, creepy thing. Like that. Like feathers on the face almost, I think. Um, it's got a very unusual body with these overdeveloped like um, trapezius back there probably be, probably because he's an he's an angel so if he, he needs to have those really developed for wing flapping angel or angelic demon fallen angel I'm guessing he looks kind of like an Old Testament uh, angel doesn't he or like a book of revelation angel but I know this is like a demon or some shit. So I'm taking a little detour perhaps to do a little bit more anatomy stuff on this guy. Because the for this shot, this the anatomy is like really apparent. First I want to get like the indication of that gesture in there. All 
All right, so I'm gonna turn this off so it doesn't get confusing for me, and I'm gonna do an anatomy study. Which I'm gonna move this over to the side. So you could use like the more defined character design, character design here. That might actually be better. But I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge myself because I, I have an understanding of the landmarks of the figure, and use uh, Samuel Dietz's rough animation to kind of riff on. So, all right. So I'm gonna do a little bit more defined head here. I'm gonna actually I'm gonna do like a straight up kind of Loomis head here. So if you notice today, we're not paying as much attention to like how the stuff moves as we are to how it's drawn and like the action of the individual frames. As we do more of this stuff throughout the next week, uh, we'll, we'll definitely be paying more attention to frame by frame and stuff. But right for right now, this is a chance to like slow down and pay attention to individual really well done drawings and things that successfully describe the action really well. Let's see, like the anatomical landmarks of the bottom of the rib cage would probably be about, be about here. Let's say corners of the pelvis about there. That's the, top, that's the shoulder there. There's, some, there's the clavicle right here. Just about. I think those there was some. Yeah, let's see. It goes back over there. I can glance at the other drawing here for a cheat sheet also. See how the other, how the other, uh, the cleanup artist handled it. Sam might have done the cleanup on this himself, I think. But there were some ama there were some amazing cleanup artists on Castlevania. So what I'm doing there, by the way, with the abs, uh, maybe I can illustrate it here. So the way the abs work is the abs actually on like these big long strips that hook into the pit of the crotch and that go travel up to like under your neck they actually go under the pectorals like your abs actually go up under your pectorals stuff and up to your neck that, that means like if you're standing up straight and you like you get that feeling when you raise your head up and down um when you raise your head up and down, like, um, uh, you can feel it in the pit of your crotch sometimes. Or across your stomach, or whatever. So, let's see another few things. Uh, I got the egg shape of the rib cage in here. It's kind of shape about here. The top of the pelvis, just about here. There's all those guesstimations. I think this character designs like. I think his uh yeah his uh pelvis is kind of pretty elongated and exaggerated. The pit of the crotch goes a little bit further down there, I would say. So I'm using this as an opportunity to do a draw over over um, the um, this kind of turtle shell shape for the deltoid there. Let's see. So the trapezius is actually coming along from the back of the neck. Well, this is really severely exaggerated, by the way, compared to a human being. There's like a gap in here, and you can see it a little bit more on the final cleanup here, this kind of gap area here. And that happens on, on real human beings also. But this is like severely, severely exaggerated. Compared to, I don't think there's any, unless you're like a really roided out person and stuff, I don't think there's anybody that really has neck muscles like that in real life.
So check this out. Look, you notice how he uh, he did like interlocking shapes basically for the limbs here. It's almost like you're fitting together pieces of Legos for, for the limbs a little bit. Something really relaxing about doing these, isn't it? Like, but the thing is, I want people to I want people to do a mix of these plus trying to trying to like draw stuff yourself, so that you can make this you can make what you do in these studies a little bit more intuitive when you're inventing. Eventually, we'll, we'll get more into using utilizing the anatomy a little bit more for our animation. Yeah, I'm thinking about that neck a little bit more. Now that I've done a draw over like that, I can start to kind of think a little bit about stuff in that vein. rough thing. Anyway. Alright, so we're going to take a short break. Uh, feel free to keep going with, uh, with your drawing right there. We're going to, I'm going to give us maybe about another 10 minute break. Okay, Google, set timer 10 minutes. Okay, Google, set timer 10 minutes. 10 minutes, and that's starting now. So what I want to know is, would people like to do more of these for the rest of the session? Or would you like to do another to close out this evening with a uh, set of figure poses? I'm leaning towards doing a time set because I kind of want to show people the uh, value of doing studies like this, and then doing uh, and then and then going to doing figure drawing because a little bit, little bits and pieces of what you pick up on doing the drawover starts filtering them into your observations of the figure. Little baby Zergly needs a nap. Okay. One of the, one of our Twitch users needs an app. More of these, please. Well, I mean, if you want to do them yourself, you can. Uh, but I'm leaning heavily towards having us do another do a uh, another set of two minute poses, or maybe two or five minute poses, or something like that, to close out the evening. But we'll see though. These have been really thoughtful and cerebral and given us a little bit more to, to sink our teeth into. So it wouldn't be, we could do either or really. Either or of these would be good. Mm -hmm. Hey, Space Dad. Yeah. 
have you been copying like individual frames in Sakagaburu? Because I can't really figure that out. I use the snipping tool that's uh, in uh, Windows 10. Just look up the Google Google how to use the snipping tool, and you can use that. And I, I just okay. I just pin the I pin the snip. Uh, I have the snipping tool um, pinned on my desktop uh, my desktop top bar, and that's how I that's how I do like those little screen grabs. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. You can also use print screen, and then you just chop out the image. The, Print, you hit print screen, it basically takes a copy and it, you can paste into whatever thing you want to I, paste an image into. Yeah, I did that. That just feels very inefficient to me. I would actually be doing that myself if um, if this keyboard I had had a, print, a convenient print screen button, but it doesn't. Here, I'm going to hit the restroom. Go back. Another thing I want to do in the future is I maybe want to, when I get more comfortable with doing it, um, walk through building characters, building character drawings up. But I'm not too confident in that, in that right now, but I'm working on that. In the future, though, I definitely want to do that. A lot of people seem to think that we should probably do some um, more time closes. So yeah, maybe we should close out with that. We did have a good session with uh, these little drawover studies. Thanks for the 120 bits, the Invisible Man. And yeah, folks, if you want to help contribute to the stream, um, there's... Uh, there's a tip jar for stuff on my personal server and also like the um and my personal discord server and also uh you can find it on my twitch chat page uh in the panel section uh i have a coffee link that uh gives direct donations to my paypal account and there's a um and uh, also you can there's also a patreon link uh, which I need to update this week, this weekend, maybe tomorrow, I believe. And um, uh, in addition to that, you can also support me by uh, signing up for... Uh, uh, I'm really, really tired right now. Sorry, folks. But you can also support me by subbing to me on Twitch or sending me bits. But the best way, if you want to give, uh, if you want to give direct donation, would be the coffee link. Oh, uh, I did want to share what I was working on earlier this week. I sh uh, for the people who haven't seen the stuff yet. So I got a few like story ideas that I'm sort of slowly developing for what I want to use for animation stuff in the near future. Oh yeah, here's some other warm-up stuff I did earlier today. Oh, that's the wrong page, isn't it? There we go. So 
So that's also why I picked the Castlevania werewolf thing. Uh, I've got a story involving a kid fighting a werewolf. That's actually an idea that I had like five years ago, but I'm coming back to to do new stuff for. So I'm developing like trying to figure out their personalities and what kind of story I want to tell with it a little bit more. But it's like a kid with supernatural abilities confronting and fighting a werewolf. And a bunch of other stuff with the kid all throughout here that I did. Yeah, there's that and there's a few other things. Uh, I did have some more to show from another two hook story ideas I'm working on, but I'm gonna have to dig those out if I do if I share them. I'll hold off on those. Do some see some nice drawovers. The cool thing about drawovers is, like I said, they're mod modular. You can keep doing more of them. Uh, just don't like make them into a crutch. You know, like at some point you're gonna have to draw stuff yourself. Uh, mind you, you can extrapolate stuff from drawovers, especially like drawovers of figures, into content of your own, like. You can do a drawover study as a starting point to understand a pose that you're going to be using for a character that you're going to be drawing, drawing an illustration of or something. We're almost ready to be back from our break. Just doing some invented poses for fun here. set of should we make this twos or fives let's do fives maybe we get four really really effective poses here okay google stop and then if you want to do more than that more than beyond the five you can do some figure invention i would say okay google set timer for two minutes 30 seconds no no, no. two minutes and 30 wrong, seconds. wrong 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 <laughs> i'm definitely now. tired okay google stop timer no problem. Consider it canceled. Okay, Google, set timer for 20 minutes, 30 seconds. 20 minutes and 30 seconds. And we're starting now. All right, so keep in mind some of the stuff that you may have observed while doing those drawovers of the animation post. Remember what we started with? Start with that head. And here's a trick. You can do vision ghosting, where you glance over at what you're drawing. You keep it in your visual memory. Ghost it in your eye. And then it's almost like you're doing a drawover study, but just by observation. You just shift your eye back and forth over to it. Not to like directly do it. We're not doing a direct trace copy here, but just enough so you can get kind of a little bit more of the feel of the pose in. Whatever.
So something I'm going to have to fix this week is that I have to really like crane my neck over to the side to look at these poses from how my setup currently is. So I'm going to have to rearrange a few things, I think, next week. Like, I think putting the current monitor that I'm looking at for my reference over to my left might work a little better. Also, the monitor that we're using right now, that's, this is a freaking 1440p monitor, the one that we have the reference on. That's totally not necessary for, for putting that on these streams. So maybe I can put these on the, on the vertical 1080p monitor. In fact, let me try that. Sorry, folks. Uh, this is going to be really brief. A little brief blackout there while I rearrange these real quick. There we go. So now you can see some of the off-camera junk I was messing with. Discord over there. So now I'm going to have to make some adjustments so I can read Discord a little bit easier, though. That's the issue. But yeah, I think this works a little better. I get a better view of the, of the figure. Uh, shit. Sorry. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to make some OBS... Sorry about the real-time OBS adjustments here. But I wanted to do that before... Because I've been meaning to to make that adjustment. And, oh yeah, this works a lot better. Like, there's a lot of stuff I, I couldn't really see. Because I, I didn't have a good view of the model from where I was sitting. This will work a lot better. I think we have to make like little workspace adjustments this week. Like that. There's a few other things I think I can do too. Now I'm seated right now. It's a little inconvenient for me to use uh, my uh, use my arm sweep. I'm gonna have to make some adjustments to my drawing space. Shit. And wouldn't you know, I have to go to the bathroom really bad right now. So just just keep at it, folks. I'll uh, I'll make you guys the star while I have while I use the restroom. Be right back.
And I'm back. Sort of. So thinking a little bit more about what we did today. I'm thinking I want to grab some live action reference, preferably for Monday. And then we will do keyframe draw, we will do keyframe draw over studies, basically using our figure puppet to create keyframe animation for like a study to understand the action. And it's not really necessary, ne like this is like, so doing something like that would be like a first step to creating some animation. Like you do a draw over study to create like some keyframes and sort of stuff. Like you don't necessarily, you don't necessarily use those as your actual keyframes for the animation, but you can use them as a starting point or to understand an action that you want to utilize for animation. So I'm going to find some action poses, just some some action scenes, or really clear scenes where you can really clearly see the action that's happening in them to use for Monday. It's a lot of classic kung fu films that would actually work great for that because they tend to like have far back cameras and, and stage them really clearly. Any film where there's not a lot of like camera craziness going on and where you can very clearly st see stuff that's happening and it would work. So the entire Jackie Chan library. Kind of, yeah. Not all of it. There's a couple Jackie Chan films that were filmed by Westerners who didn't stage it right. I mean, you can't go wrong with Drunken Master or any of the police stories. Mm -hmm. Western directors now are a lot more sophisticated. And um, how to, uh, a lot, there's a lot of Western directors now that are sophisticated in how to like stage like martial arts spectacle scenes and stage them clearly stuff but that didn't always used to be the case i think it was less staging it and more of they didn't have time or the skill set to do it i think jackie had actually talked about this in an interview once yeah they, they didn't it. understand like they didn't have the skill set for because they weren't used to it this was like a form learning a foreign language to them in a weird way no it was actually more the like the actors just physically couldn't do it oh yeah i'm like and unlike the Chinese market, where basically Jackie gets as much time as he wants to to do a single shot, oh, they was, were on a budget. Also, they were on really limited time. Like Jackie was able to take yeah. as many takes when in Hong Kong cinema, Jackie was able to take as many takes as he needed to get an action right. And they they had to like yeah yeah you're right about that. I remember seeing the documentary where they talked about that. But it's like a mix of both, really. Like the, I think it's also that the direct, like even then, like even when you're doing time-saving tricks like that, like um, these days there are time-saving tricks that can still get you like clearly staged action and stuff that you see all over the place in film. There's quite a few of them in John Wick, by the way. Although in the case of John Wick, regardless of how you how you view it, just like it's just a fun rampage movie. Yeah, it is. I killed my dog. Well, half and that's the end. that's all you need to know. <laughs> that's really all you need dog. to know. You just go to the rampage over it. <laughs> Honestly, like I, I, even the like the Society of Assassins shit, they they could have just dispensed with it. Could have just been like a random guy who, who they killed his dog. I killed my dog.
You get a Keanu. Oh man. <laughs> Johnny Silverhand. I mean, I thought I thought it was I thought it uh, I thought it was okay, like his portrayal of the character and whatever. Uh, the problems with the game wasn't necessarily him. Yeah, it was more the mountain of unfinished glitch. No, everything. Yeah, it was more than that. There's like way more problems with that with that game when you look when you look at it under the microscope. Like the game did not have any idea what kind of game it was. Like, was it an open world game? Uh, kind of. Is it a is it an RPG? Mm, sort of, but the narrative choice doesn't matter very much. Uh, is, it, is, it, is it like a David Cage sort of game where you can choose your own adventure? No, definitely not. That's <laughs> a. <laughs> But it, like, it, it promised too much about what it could be in people's minds and failed to deliver on all of it. <laughs> like, it was such a overly... It was a game of hubris on the part of the devs. Or the, uh, the, I went the, into the game... The uh, went into the game expecting like a decent story and nothing else. So I wasn't disappointed per se. I was just like let down by the the awful gameplay for my in my case there's so much so much in the game that it's just like blatantly unfinished and i don't just mean from a bug standpoint i mean narratively unfinished like there's lots of stuff that really feels like giant gaps and loose ends of think stuff that's missing that might have been like cut from the story at some point like stuff that gets talked up in the marketing that is barely a blip in the actual game um uh the um the e3 demo that was like a proof of concept for what the game could be about like the that whole thing where you're buying that spider bot there's nothing else like that really in the rest of the game like that's the only mission that you really get that level of choice uh for it and remember like the big the big thing about that game is like everything you do in this mission is going to affect blah blah no it won't, fucking won't there's like one car there's like one or two characters that might show up very briefly later that's about it And, and there's other there's other stuff that was like blatant fucking lies like uh whether you choose to kill and spare this boss character that you just fought uh will affect the outcome of the game no it won't it won't it doesn't matter you never see that other character again if you if you spare them it doesn't fucking matter <laughs> first playthrough and my only one i ended up killing myself unintentionally yeah well Welcome to Night City. Uh, sometimes you'll, uh, you'll you'll do a lot of that. You might even fall under the world several times. I don't know. I don't think there's any like option in the endings that makes you end in like a good ending. Like the two ones I got were really lackluster. Hmm. I I have news for you. Almost all the endings are arguably pretty lackluster. I do like what one person criticizing the game had to say about one of... Oh, I should spoil it. People have had enough cruelty. Alright, looks like we're done. We'll just wind down a little bit. Uh, stick around, folks. Uh, we're going to raid someone. we got 31 people here, so maybe let's keep that number up and let's go raid someone. So yeah, I'll see you guys next Monday. We'll be doing... Okay, Google, stop. So we'll be doing more, uh, more of this, but we'll be evolving the next step on it. I, I want to take some live-action footage and do some of what we did today. With that live-action footage to create keyframes that and see how they look in motion. Um, or... Magma Studio, that's fine. Like you can do that. You can do side by side thumbnails in Magma Studio, or like draw over of the still frames that we screenshot in Magma or something. And then you can just compile them into a, like an animation app later or whatever. But um, we're gonna maybe we're gonna grab some uh, we're gonna grab some live action to study for Monday. And that'll be a that'll be a hoot. 
you're learning about how figures move by actually analyzing how they move instead of trying to guess. So, uh, we're going to raid someone now. Let's see who is active right now, shall we? Oh, I think there was someone from the um, from the Hune's Dojo Discord who's doing a stream right now. Maybe we could raid them. Let me check. Well, if they are, they didn't post their stream link, so I won't be able to use it. Oh, well, I'll save that for another time. Um, let's see. Look for some artists, preferably some people I know who are streaming. Whoops. Do that. Choo -choo train. Yeah, let's make a train. Who, uh... Oxcoxa. They were neat. Oh, let's see here. Going up, going up. Looking for art streamers. Lita. Oh. Why are you moving it? That's an ad. Here, excuse me. Everyone says I. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. Let's wait for the ad and see see what they're up to. Looks like they're doing some uh, manga stuff. They might be cool to check out. Um. Oh, what the? Okay. Ox Coxa might be good. We've we've uh, rated them before. Pua. I don't think I've rated Fua before. Maybe we could rate them. But they're. Uh, I remember them. Uh, I'm trying to, rem trying to remember where I know them from. But they are a good artist. I think they're just someone I randomly followed um, that I don't know from anywhere. Just because I like their art when I saw it on stream. Yeah, let's raid them. Ooh, uh... We are raping Fuwa. Everyone get on board. Looks like we got everyone ready to go, so I'm just going to raid us right now without waiting. So, thank you all for coming. Uh, we will be meeting again next Monday at uh, 5.30 Pacific Time. I'll be doing more of this and also some live action study stuff. I really enjoyed doing that Sakuga animation study stuff, so maybe we'll fit in a little bit of that, too. Alright. See you guys. See you guys Monday. Thank you so much.